Christina here. I'm just hopping on to my live and just waiting for a couple people to join and then we'll start. I'm going to talk a little bit about, just a little bit more, uh, an update about my online business. I've been running it for six, seven months now and so just wanted to share where I'm at with it. Also, I had some really good questions come in this week from a lead that I wanted to answer and discuss here because I think it can really help in clarifying some misunderstandings that might be around what this business is. And then also, if there's time, we'll talk about beliefs and why they matter. So let me just share an update. I invested in this business, which as I shared in my last live, is Energic, and it's a Kangen water machine. It's a machine that produces Kangen water. There's a whole reality here about the water in and of itself and how freaking amazing it is and needs to be a, a standard of drinking water for every single person on the planet, period. So that's the first point, you know, like there's a whole reality with the water. But in terms of the business, that's kind of, you know, that's a whole other reality that exists. So this online business is the water and it's also the business opportunity. So I invested last fall around September, I bought myself a Kangen water machine, which was best investment I've ever made hands down, whether I did the business or not. This water is an absolute necessity in my life. A molecular hydrogen, look it up, do your research, it's so important. So I invested and I started getting to work with the online platform that I invested in. In the six week business launch, they tell you step by step, how do you set this up? So I started walking the course and just doing what they said. I got onto Facebook, I started doing engagement ads, I started making ads, I started getting everything set up on the internet to allow me to start spreading the word about this business opportunity. And initially, like, okay, so September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, we're eight months into it. I didn't run my first ad until November, so two months after I invested, and I didn't get much action right away. Nothing was really happening. Um, I wasn't getting in any leads, whatever. Let's talk about where I'm at right now, because where I'm at now is I'm on like my fifth or sixth ad, and I'm getting about a lead a day, which is so exciting, because three months ago, I didn't have any leads coming in from ads. Um, and this is part of the automation aspect of it, where you run an ad, and then it generates leads for you. I don't have to go cold calling, I don't have to go door to door, I don't have to go reaching out for people and say, hey, are you interested in this? I put an ad up, it runs, and it brings me lead. And so I have an ad running right now that's providing about a lead a day, which is great. In the online community that I'm a part of, five is like, you kind of want to be at five at the minimum, five leads a day. Um, but I'm stoked to be having one lead a day, like, because that means my faucet is turned on, people are coming through my ads, I'm connecting with people, I'm able to engage and talk to people. It's really exciting. And also from sharing the content online, being present on social media, making videos, it's so fun. It's so creative. I'm also generating probably two to three leads a week from there. I mean, just today I had two leads that want to buy the water just from the, the water video that I shared today. So it's exciting where I'm at because I, I even though I wanted that overnight success, like quick, you know, instant gratification, like let me do this business, let me invest and right away, like have it be paying off. Even though I knew like I want that, practically speaking, that's not how it works. What I was hearing was people within, people can have all sorts of results with this business. But on average, it sounded like it took maybe six to nine months to really start get things moving. So I was like really clear that that's kind of where I'm at. Like it's a matter of when, not a matter of if this is gonna happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So I was just really keen on like, just keep showing up, keep doing the work, being present, sharing myself, and you know, the leads are gonna come in, the sales are gonna come in, the business is gonna build. And now to be where I'm at now, where it's like, oh, this is what's happening, this is the beginning, now the ads are working, now the leads are coming in, coming in, now I'm, I'm sharing more, I'm finding my stride within this business, and it feels good because I can see it's working, you know? So I just wanted to share a little bit of update about that because realistically, this is not like overnight turnaround. The thing about working for people, being an employee is that you go to a job, you do the work, you get a check within two weeks. It's easy. It's You can trust, you can count on that. That's great. But when you become an entrepreneur and you start working for yourself, I mean, I've been working at this business for six months, eight months, and I haven't, I mean, I did make a sale initially right away to my partner, which was great. Get $1,300, you know, on one sale, my partner right away, just kind of like a kickback from my initial investment, which was so great. I haven't seen a check otherwise for 
eight months of doing work, but I know it's coming. I know what I'm doing. I can count and trust. I can count on and trust what I'm doing. I know what I'm building. And the beautiful thing about that is because the people have done it that are a few steps ahead of me. People are doing it and they're sharing how they're doing it and they're telling me very step by step how they're doing it. So it's really exciting because it's like, just show up, do the work, don't give up. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And um, yeah, so that's where I'm at right now. It's really exciting because I'm seeing my business build. I'm seeing the momentum in the right direction. I know what's coming. I know what's brewing. I can feel like what's here and I'm able to engage with people now and it's really exciting and like feeling comfortable to start doing lives and and you know the content that I'm sharing showing up on my stories like it's just all really fun and it, it makes being on social media more exciting for me because there's a purpose behind it you know it's not just like aimless or directionless or consuming content. I'm like a creator. I'm giving you something. I'm offering something here for you to say, hey, I have this opportunity. Um, if you're looking to improve your health, if you're looking to improve your financial situation, if you want to change your fucking life, here's an opportunity. There's tons out there. Um, you just have to be open to seeing them, which kind of segues into what I wanted to talk about, which was beliefs. But first, hi, Reese. Is it Reese? I think it's Reese. I, I'm sorry if I am not saying that right. But so the question is, it's cool that you can trust the foundation that you've built. What kind of things you, do you find give you the most reward when it comes to the process? Thanks. Well, in terms of the business process what gives me the most reward when it comes to the process what's the most rewarding honestly it is the engagement with people i'm really excited to engage and connect with people and build a team because i feel like that's where all the fucking power is that's where all the magic is you know it's like that connection when you're engaging with someone when you have an exchange with someone and you're just like feeding off of each other and growing and you know that's why this group community is so great because we do the weekly mastermind calls and everyone comes together and you're like plugging into the same kind of synergy and you're able to like grow and be fueled by that which is so cool and like you get inspired and you and you get like ideas of like oh i could do this and oh i can do that when you hear other people's stories so the whole like aspect of connecting with people and this is really a business about connection that is really what's so far and will be the most rewarding for me also knowing that you're giving people opportunities to like in like transform their lives financially and physically like all of there's so much here there's so much here so that's the most reward and also for me like what is also really rewarding is like giving the little time that is needed to set myself up for the week in terms of content so that i'm showing up consistently you know and that's really rewarding like even doing ads putting it together it's like so creative and I grew up thinking I wasn't creative so to be able to be like tapping into that element of myself is really rewarding there's just so much like I feel like my life has been so nicely preparing me for this opportunity and to step into this role that I'm just kind of like going for the ride and just like kind of I caught this wave and I'm just kind of riding it and trusting it and just making sure that I'm doing the work and showing up and trusting myself to just be expressive and share what it is I see and like why it matters to me. So that, I hope that answers your question. Um, but so segueing that into more about beliefs and why they matter. Beliefs matter, beliefs matter. And so just like a overall general point that I hear a lot is um, people think this is a scam. And now I heard about Inajik and Kangen Water 10 plus years ago, and that was a big thing online. Everything was like, it's a scam, it's a scam, it's a scam. Since I reinvested in the business and have started this again, I haven't come across too many people with that sentiment because I think for me, it's very clear in myself I know it's not a scam. I've done my research. I drink the water. I've known the company long enough. I know it's not a scam. So I don't get a lot of that, but I can see how people with a particular mindset are going to see this as a scam or opportunities online. Like this is what I've come to learn about beliefs is that I feel like a lot of us hold actually really deep core beliefs about the world in which we inherently distrust it. We believe we can't trust people, we can't trust each other, we can't trust opportunities, we can't trust the system, we can't trust, you know, life in general. And me, I've been walking a very specific process of like re-engineering all of that for myself so that I can trust life and to know that I can trust life and to make that a really core belief in myself so that when I'm existing in my day-to-day -day living, 
it is that resonance of tr absolute trust. I know what's here. I can trust what's here. I, I can trust what's coming to me. But it's important to recognize, like, what are my beliefs about things? Because you might be looking for an opportunity to improve or empower yourself financially or to change your current, you know, living situation or, you know, to change your job or you want to be healthier. But if you have a belief that that's not possible or you can't or there is no way, that is the evidence life is going to show you because when we talk about responsibility, being a responsible creator, you know, life is a reflection of who you are and what you believe and what is at your core. You get what you are. So if you're like, oh, I never get opportunities to change this or that. And oh, I'm always like, if you're in a like a fixed mindset of things don't go well for you or there are not opportunities for you or nothing works out for you, that is what life is going to give to you because you are the creator, you decide. So that's what will show up for you. And so that's why it's so important to be aware of what are our beliefs. And you know, I for a long time thought that thinking was the belief. So I would be really specific about what I was thinking about in my mind, you know, like making affirmation statements or this or that. And those thoughts, you can have specific thoughts about things, but you have to go to the root, which is fueling it, which is the beliefs. You have to go to the root because it's the beliefs that create. Because you could say, like, I trust that I will, you know, or like, you could have a belief that, oh, I want an opportunity to change my financial situation, and then an opportunity comes to you, but you doubt it and you think it's a scam, the belief is like, oh, no, actually, I can't trust things that show up in my reality. I can't trust the opportunities that are presented to me. There's something behind that that I can't trust. Um, so for me, that was like so crucial. Like that was a big pivotal moment I had in my life where I realized how much distrust I had for the world and for people and for life in general. And the moment that I kind of forgave that and let go of that and released that from myself, so much shifted, like so much shift. My whole world shifted. All of a sudden I was seeing a whole new world I had not seen before. I found a relationship with life I didn't know was possible simply because I had such a guard up for so long. And the minute I dropped the guard and like started to consider like maybe there is something here I can trust about life and that it can provide for me. And you know, it's that point of I have always been a strong believer in that point of if there's a will, there's a way. I truly believe that. I willed myself out of a smoking addiction. I willed myself to do things I didn't want to do. I willed myself to vlog for 10 years on YouTube. I've willed myself to blog for 10 years on there. Like I've overcome so many things strictly based on my pure will. And I'm a firm believer if there's a will, there's a way. So if you truly believe that there is a way for you to do something, even if you can't see how that could ever practically physically make any sense, I still believe that life can provide that for you because I think that is the power that we have as creators. Um, and I believe that that's how life exists. That's the design. You're the creator. You say what is here. You decide what is here. Um, it's how you relate to life. It's how, it's what you believe that determines everything. Your, your beliefs determine everything in how you experience yourself. You could have a really shitty day and, and people are bumping into you and being assholes to you and, you know, doing this and that and you lose your job and you're getting kicked out of your, you could have the worst fucking day possible. But if your belief and trust in life is strong enough that says, you know what, this is temporary, there's an opportunity here for me, something's shifting, something's changing, life is opening up for me to, you know, like, it's, it matters how you look at things, it matters what your mindset is, it matters what you believe is happening around you, and that it, it matters, it just matters, because you're determining your life and how you move and how you exist according to what you believe. So that's a little rant I have about that. If the two people in here have any questions, I would love to answer them. But otherwise, I wanted to also share some 
things. Um, I had a chat with a lead this week who gave me some concerns she had, which were so, I was so grateful. This is the difference between me 12 years ago to now when it comes to sales and this business. I will answer that in just a second, Reese. Okay. I'm just going to finish this point here. So, um, I had a lead come to me with some concerns about just some concerns about this business. She watched my web class. She got a kind of feel for what we, we do and, and what this, how this online business works. And, I was so grateful to receive that because I can use that to refine the information within myself and my own understanding and my own perspective about it. Whereas like 10, 12 years ago, if someone were to come with me with some objections, I would have been so afraid and nervous and like, what would they think about me? And it, I made it very personal. Um, but really now it's, it's like, oh, I get to help people make decisions about their financial situation and I get to help people decide on the opportunity if it's right for them or not. So anyways, that's just a contrasting like where I was to where I am now and how it exciting that is for me. But anyways, there's a couple points about the business that she brought up that I want to mention and talk about because I think they're just so important to clarify. So the web class that I have that's available in the link in my bio if you're interested, it's a 25 minute uh, web class with Nat and Marina who are the platform creators of the community that I'm a part of. They created the web class, they created the discovery process which I'll go into a little bit about and they're just amazing. They, they grew this community of entrepreneurs and people that are doing amazing things online. They're making what they used to make in a year, in a month. It's just incredible. Uh, one of the concerns was the webinar doesn't talk a lot about the water ionizer. And the reason for that is because the webinar is just to give you an introduction of what an online business can look like and, and how our specific online business does well is because it's a high ticket item. This is not a cheap product because it's not a cheap product. It's a high quality product. This is a medical grade device that produces you know molecular hydrogen water which is incredible for your body so this is not like a cheap product so yeah it's expensive and so the webinar is just you know introducing people to the concept of high ticket sales and why they're so amazing because one or two sales is all you need to really make a substantial difference in your life monthly. So the 25 minute web class goes into that of why high ticket sales matter and the beauty that we have with a high ticket item coupled with online marketing, you have access to billions of people, billions of people. Just remember that there's billions of people online that you have access to. So that's the first point. They don't go into the water ionizer because first you have to be comfortable with the idea of selling a high ticket item. If you're not comfortable with that, then there's no point in learning about the water product. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe some people would be more keen to know about the water than the business. And I think they're creating a water funnel in time so that we can share just the water specifically, but the web class is more designed for people looking for a business opportunity. And so that's why they don't go into the water um, too much in there. They just go into the high ticket item and why that matters selling online. And then after you watch the web class, there is a an offer to pay $99 refundable for two weeks to do the discovery process, which gives you like six hours of information regarding the business, the water machine, the science behind the water, the compensation plan, everything you need to know, how we set up ads, how the community is set up. It's a $99 one-time fee. You do the discovery process. You get two weeks to go through all the information and decide, does this resonate with me or not? Because that's really important. Important. And that's another big difference about the sales that I love about this community and where we're at now in this world is that you don't have to be pushy, selly on any, this is about what resonates with you. What is your passion? What is your purpose? What do you want to do in your life? What do you want your life to look like? And I've spent a long time getting really clear about all that stuff. So I was really like clear when this opportunity came back to me, like, this is what I want to do. Yes. So that's why the discovery process is so beautiful. If people were to give themselves an opportunity to go through it, and just decide, does this resonate or not? Does this feel right or not? And maybe you can do that without the discovery process. That's great. But the discovery process gives you all the information. So like, you know what you're saying no to if you want to say no. And it's completely refundable. So that's amazing. 
She was also concerned about a weekly investment that you have to give to the community, and it's not. Like, the investment that you're giving, like, you pay $99, you do the discovery process, you decide, is this the right opportunity for me or not? Yes? Okay, let's move forward. When you move forward, there's, you know, things that you can do within the community to support yourself, but ultimately, then, the time you put into the community is the time you're putting into your business. It's serving you. This is, like, completely self-led, self-directive. Like, owning your own business and running your own business is not like working for someone and people who are coming from the employee mindset, which me, I was, I'm used to being told what to do, when to do it, why, how to do it, why to do it. Like, you know, this is a whole new arena for me in terms of becoming self-directive and a self-leader and making my decisions about what is going to, you know, be best for my business. What actions do I need to do today to ensure my business is moving forward? So the the investment in terms of the community is like you're actually getting so much value out of the community because you have people who are steps and years ahead of you doing exactly what you want to be doing and producing the results that you want. So learning from them, engaging with them, showing up for the mastermind calls, like that stuff is all important. I'm realizing too, I had to learn that myself. Like I don't know this. I need to learn. I need to be humble and like listen to the people that are ahead of me doing what I want to be doing because they are doing it so obviously I have something to learn if I'm not doing it yet and then a big thing that I wanted to talk was you know if the business is truly working for them what is the mo motivation to recruit recruit others she was concerned that it's kind of multi-level marketing um, which seemed to have like a negative connotation around it I you know I'm not totally clear on those terms multi-level marketing I know this is network marketing you're ne networking but I wanted to clarify that like this online business is two parts there's the water and then there's the business. You can sell the water or you could sell the business or you could sell both. It's up to you. I'm kind of creating, I'm noticing a, a hybrid where I see so much value in the water and I want to share the water because I don't have to sell the water. I just share the information I know about the water and it sells itself because it is the best fucking water possible. The business I'm realizing now I want to sell because it's the opportunity I've been looking for. It's something that I've wanted to create in my life, financial freedom, an, like a compensation plan that provides generational wealth and legacy money where you hit certain ranks where you're triggering unconditional income for life that is transferable to your children. Yes, sign me up. That's what I want to do. It's like you don't have to sell the business. You don't have to recruit people to do the business to make this business work. You can just sell the water. So I just wanted to clarify that like this opportunity is two parts really. It's health and financial, you know, physical health and financial health and you can do one or the other or both it's so amazing the multi-dimensionality of this opportunity so I just wanted to clarify that and I think that's it and I've been chatting for a little bit and I will go back to Reese's question here because he's just so patient here what is your perspective on consequences and making good choices I mean consequence has a negative connotation to it but consequence is just like the sequence of events that happen after a decision or choice that's made you know like so I'm not sure maybe you could be more specific about what your question is Reese because I don't I'm not sure what is my perspective on consequence consequence is just an outflow it's a sequence of events that happens after a moment a decision and action and making good choices like you know it's up to the individual it's up to us to decide what is a good choice what's good for you like I am coming out of a very heavy belief core belief that I've been busy dismantling that I'm responsible for other people in the context of, you know, I have to take on the responsibility for how other people feel. And what that left me was with a very heavy burden and a lot of resentments and uh, a lot of anger and bitterness and a, uh, like, sad, like, insignificant being because I was so busy trying to care for everyone else. And what I wasn't doing was caring for myself. So in terms of like making good choices, I, I, I've been having to learn how to serve myself. How do I respect and honor and hear and validate and take care of myself? How do I 
what are good choices for me? What is best for me? You know, I've been so busy trying to do what's best for everybody from that perspective of feeling responsible for people and instead of realizing, oh, when I do what's best for me and what I need, when I'm like hearing my body and my body's communicating, I'm not comfortable with this or I want to do this. When I start unconditionally honoring myself and what I need and what I want to do every single day without the uh, the idea of what I'm supposed to do or what's right or wrong, when I remove all that, what I realize is I'm actually doing what's best for everybody because I become a better version of me when I'm serving myself and all of a sudden now I become better for other people. So when you do what's best for you in terms of making good choices, when you do what's good for you and you know what's good for you, you know what's good for you. When you do what's good for you, you're going to be doing what's good for other people by default. So there you go in terms of a good choice. If you're making good choices for yourself, that are empowering for you and you honoring yourself and taking responsibility for yourself and like uplifting yourself when you're doing that the consequence of that is you're better for other people and now all of a sudden you're inspiring and showing other people what's possible for them and i hope that answers your question or makes sense please uh, you are trustworthy and if more people were like you the world would be better place. thank you reese i appreciate that i mean a ditto right back at you. I feel like, you know, that's what I've been busy working with. Like, but you know, that point of being trustworthy, it kind of ties into that point of like, what was my relationship to life? I distrusted life. I had no trust in life. I was so afraid of life. I, every single person I would come across, I would think there's something deceptive behind this person. Same thing for me. I thought there was something deceptive behind me. I couldn't trust myself. I was not trustworthy. I was evil. I was snaky. I was this or that. And I had the same feeling about other people, even if I wasn't aware of it. And after having my son and going through this transformation that I've been going through, I realized how fearful I was of life, how much I feared life, how much I distrusted every opportunity that came across my path. I can't trust it. I can't count on life. Life is not, you know, something I can trust. I can't count on this. When it's like, that's a belief that's fueling my reality to give me what I'm asking for, you know, whereas like if I shift that and just say, you know what, I do know that the nature of life is to provide everything in its environment. Like if I know that that's the true nature of life, then I should trust everyone that comes across my path and I should trust every opportunity that comes my way. So trustworthy was something that I had to work really hard for because I didn't inherently have that. I, which I feel like a lot of us kind of grew up distrusting life like look at our relationship to the world we a lot of us are just not happy with the world and we don't trust the system and everyone's like you know this or that it's just like we don't have a great relationship with life which is like our relationship with ourselves and you know we can do work to purify and, and clear all that out so that our true relationship with life is in you know alignment with our highest potential like that's the goal that's why we're here right so Thanks, Reese. Thanks for being here. Hey, Jane. Um, I don't know if I have much else to share. I will say that, you know, beliefs, you can work with beliefs from the perspective of beliefs matter because they are coming from a knowing, you know, and you can develop beliefs to be knowings. You can you can develop things to be like this is not maybe true for me right now, but I can keep practicing this perspective and in time it will become annoying. And when something's annoying, that's when you have passion, that's when you have conviction, that's when you have confidence. Um, so beliefs matter in terms of, you know, identify what beliefs are limiting me and what beliefs don't I believe that I wish were real because, you know, you can practice those over time and, and create a knowing within you that's like, I know who I am, I know what life is, I know the opportunities that are here for me, I know that anything is possible. Like, imagine having a belief where like, oh, I can't trust life versus I can trust life. Which one do you think is going to give you a better outcome in life? You know, which one would you rather walk with? I can't trust life or I can trust life. And who decides? You, you decide. So I just encourage anyone, you know, to like reflect on like, where am I limiting myself or where do I have this guard up that I can't trust life? Why do I think I can't trust people? Why do I think everything's a scam? Why am I so afraid of everything? It matters. It matters to identify that stuff because you can change it and you can completely change your life that, that way. So anyways, kind of a random tangent of thoughts here. 
displayed for all to see. So um, I'm going to sign off now. Thanks for uh, being here and walking with. And uh, if any questions come up from watching this in the replay, I would love to hear those. Um, otherwise, I will probably be back next Thursday. So thanks.